Having our news this half an hour, tax slam. Starbucks executive chairman Howard Schultz once called the president's tax reform plan fool's gold, and now he's taking aim at the legislation again. At an event in Washington, Schultz said that the corporate tax reduction does nothing for the millions of Americans he says are being left behind economically. Having a corporate tax cut of a rate to 21 percent was not disruptive in terms of the tax reform on a comprehensive basis that the country needed in order to create more value for people who are being left behind. Joining me right now is Galaxy Digital Capital Management founder and CEO Mike Novogratz. Mike, it's great to see you again. You as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And you have been a student of this market for a long time, have done incredibly well uh, in this market. Tell us how you see this tax plan and the impact on markets and the economy. Well, listen, it's been great for the markets, right? The tax plan broadly has led to an amazing amount of buybacks. And so if you look at Apple just a few weeks ago announced a $100 billion buyback, stock goes straight up. And so... You know, one of the disappointing parts of it for the, for the little man, what Howard Schultz was talking about, is it is going to corporate buybacks. It is going to shareholders. It's not necessarily feeding down to the, uh, to the bottom half of our country. Who needs it? Well, you, you also, though, see all those bonus checks, and you do see unemployment at virtually full employment right now. So we, this we, economy has we, certainly we, done we better. We full employment, or very close to full employment before the tax, tax mm -hmm. plan. And so to me, it seemed... Uh, strange that you would give a sugar jolt to an economy when it was already at full employment. You definitely have that, that uh, viewpoint among many, but there are some that feels like we're looking at a 3% economic story this year yeah. uh, and, and going forward because partly the tax cut plan and the rollback in regulations. Listen, there, there are certainly uh, animal spirits that picked up in the corporate boardroom. That's right. 100%. Uh, what's interesting is most of that has shown up through tax, through uh, stock buybacks. Buybacks, yeah. That's, it and, hasn't and that's, shown up through huge capex expenditure. And, and that's uh, actually one of the top stories in the journal today. I want to want to talk about your big week. You've got some big news for us. Your company, Galaxy Digital Capital, uh, teaming up with Bloomberg uh, to launch a new index that will track the performance of 10 of the largest cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, among others. Tell us about your new index. Yeah, listen, so in 1960, the, the, the uh, S&P 500 came out, uh, 72 the Lehman Ag, and I remember in 1992 I was working at Goldman Sachs and the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index came out. And the idea, quite frankly, was to give uh, that asset class a shot to be th seen as institutional. And so if you look at commodity prices post-1992, uh, when institutions piled in as an asset class, they went straight up. And so we, we teamed up with Bloomberg in a partnership uh, to create what we think is the first institutional quality benchmark for cryptocurrencies. Um, and you feel this is going to give the credibility to crypto the way that the S&P got the credibility back in the it day? Is, it is part of the architecture needed to pull institutions into this really exciting space. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but certainly this plus some custody uh, solutions which are on the way, I think we'll get, and I see it, I meet with CEOs and, and heads of uh, big pools of capital all the time. They are slowly moving. I keep saying the herd is coming. Uh, I was at the New York Stock Exchange recently, and I'd be shocked if they don't do something exciting in the next, you know, three to, three to 12 months. Well, something like what? I, you know, just getting involved in the space. They're not, you, you look at what these other exchanges, these crypto exchanges are making. Right, uh, Bitfinex, Binance, things you've never heard of are making, you know, three hundred million dollars in a six-month period of profit, and so the big legacy institutions aren't going to let that just go by and say, "Oh, let them have it." Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing a shift across the board. So th this index, the BGCI, measures the performance of ten currencies uh, with Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, is that Ethereum? Ethereum, thank you. Um, weighted the most. How did you come up with this formulation? Why are those so, two weighting the most? So what's interesting about index is we actually. Can Consulted with Bloomberg, but they came up with it. Uh, they capped each of the, the, the top performers at 30%, and so Bitcoin actually has a larger market cap in reality of 30%. That makes sense. People know that one the most. Yes, right? uh, to, but to try to give some more balance to the index so it wasn't just a Bitcoin index. Tell me about the background of this. I mean, you think this is going to be mainstream at some point using Bitcoin instead of cash? I don't think so. I think no. Bitcoin could replace gold, though, digital gold. I mean, I use this exp uh, expression all the time. When I gave my mother digital flowers for Mother's Day, she got really angry at me. <laughs> but digital when my, flowers. But that's... when my daughter gets digital flowers from her boyfriend, she says, oh, he loves me. Okay, that's um, good. But you know, that, that's a great analogy. This is a millennial-led revolution, and the idea of digital, the digital stuff is, is so much easier for them to understand. And so as a store of value, I could see Bitcoin going. I don't think we replace the dollar or the euro uh, anytime soon. But what's unique about this crypto world is that 
the, the token economics allow you to quickly create social networks uh, to drive one direction. And so in every single industry, if it's decentralized uh, Uber versus Uber, uh, or, uh, or uh, Airbnb, or file sharing, uh, uh, or sovereign identity, you know, there's going to be big, big changes coming. And it's not saying that the legacy companies are all going to lose. No, they're going to fight back. Uh, Facebook's got a pretty strong monopoly. Uh, but there's real privacy issues. And, and the, the blockchain itself is an unbelievable uh, fire guard against privacy. And, and that's why some people feel like the blockchain, they understand the blockchain, but they don't understand Bitcoin. What do we need to understand better about Bitcoin? What do you want to well, tell our it, viewers that maybe we don't so understand? A lot of people say that, right? Oh, I like blockchain, but I don't like right the tokens the tokens are really essential to create that it's the incentive mechanism to create that social network uh, the blockchains themselves are really think about it, they're just databases or Microsoft Excel spreadsheets uh, that are out there uh, now they're un they're unchangeable immutable uh, and they're seen by everyone in the in that community and so that's what's unique about them but the real innovation is the coin to create that network to drive uh, social behavior. Mm, it's, it, how much money has gone into this so far? I and know it, you just launched last week. So any so, any so we right, right now it's just launched the index. So there hasn't been money. We expect lots of funds and and other products to be uh, developed around the index. But we started with just launching the index. And you were an early believer in Bitcoin. I was. You did incredibly well with it. Congratulations. What Thank did you, you see? How did you know? You know, when I originally bought it, it was trading at less than a hundred. Uh, Wow. It was, you know, post-2008, post-2012, so we had the, the global financial crisis and the European crisis, and you had this group of people that didn't trust central authority. And so I figured there were enough libertarians and cyberpunks and, and people that wanted to live off the grid uh, and that the Chinese were buying, and that this was, for the first time, a, a, a kind of a global speculative uh, game. It became the first global speculative mania. I mean, you know, the markets were off a lot last night because of what happened in Korea. Uh, so it's Korea, Taiwan, China, India, Africa. People globally participate in this. And not just wealthy people. This is kind of the people's revolution. Uh, last year we had this amazing run. 98% of all volume was retail. We've never wow, seen a Wow, 98% of the volume. That's incredible. And so we're in that shift now where the institutions are saying, wait, we've got to participate. And so it's this... Yeah, initially it was a fraud when it was, you know, yes. the, the institutions didn't want to be there. But now you're saying one by one they're getting involved. I mean, you got to think about Michael Bloomberg, uh, not that he is all of Bloomberg. You know, he is a really savvy guy and he's older. Uh, and, you know, for Bloomberg as a company to say, hey, we're okay with, you know, being part of the crypto thing is, is, is a big deal. It sure is. Mike, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks a ton. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank Mike you. Mike Novogratz joining us.